would like to say a special thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this episode. Reincarnation is one of life's great mysteries, where incredible stories are told either by children just chatting to their parents, who were able to accurately describe their past lives, or by people who regressed under hypnotherapy, who were able to recall past lives in detail and were found to be historically accurate. The following are three amazing stories of people who remembered their past lives when they were children. The details that they describe are extremely vivid and cannot be explained even after scientific inquiry. The following three stories were researched by Jim B. Tucker, MD, who is a child psychiatrist at the University of Virginia School of Medicine and an expert in the studies of reincarnation and interviewed the following three individuals. Number three, Olivia, England. When Olivia was two years old, she was out walking with her mother. When her mother asked, what time do you think it is? And Olivia replied, seven o'clock, then added, 1787. On another occasion, when Olivia was two years old, she casually said to her mother, my name used to be Daisy. A short time later, she again approached her mother and said, Robinson. Her mother asked what that meant, and Olivia replied, It was my name, and that used to be called Daisy Robinson. When she was two and a half, Olivia would often talk about past events. Her father asked her whether she used to have a different mummy and daddy, and she excitedly replied, Yes. Another time, Olivia came up to her mother and told her, all the air came out of here. And her mother replied, out of where? And Olivia pointed to the middle of her body and said, here, and I died, but I don't like talking about it, and then left the room. Her mother was quite stunned because Olivia had had no contact with death other than seeing a dead frog once that her parents hadn't even told her was dead. One day after waking up from a nap, Olivia spoke to her mother again about 1787. Her mother asked her if she'd remembered any songs back then, and Olivia immediately said, London Bridge is falling down, which was a favourite of hers. That nursery rhyme was in fact around in 1787. Another time, Olivia walked up to her mother, and out of the blue said, 30 years old. Her mother said, who is 30 years old? And Olivia replied, I was when I died. I died because I didn't eat anything and then wandered away. Her mother then thought back to the voracious appetite Olivia had when she was a newborn, which could be explained by the starvation that she had suffered shortly before dying in her previous life. Olivia was eating a green apple one day and giggling to herself. She told her mother that Daisy Robinson had only eaten red apples, but now she only ate green apples. Another time, she said that Daisy Robinson's mother was called Kitty. Her mother knew that Olivia did not know anyone called Kitty. Neither did she. Olivia did not talk about the subject again until she was about four years old, where Olivia's mother figured she'd outgrown it, and so they had a conversation about the death of their family dog. Olivia wondered whether the dog would come back as another dog, because she had had past lives. But then Olivia said that their dog would not be a new doggy yet because you spend a bit of time dead first, like a few weeks or months or something. Her mother asked, is that what happened to you? And she replied, yes. Mother asked where she was after she died and she said she didn't exist. She said that she just went into thin air. She went up into the sky and broke up into bits of dust. The dust then floated all over the place. She said dying wasn't scary, and when she was dust, other people made friends with her. They were dust as well. Mother asked if she was afraid of dying. Livia said she wasn't, but the thought of dying did make her sad because she liked being on Earth. 
Olivia talked about Daisy's life and where she lived in a little town. She could not remember the name of the town but said it was in England. She said most people lived in little villages where everyone knew each other. In the little town they sold bread, cheese and meat. Mother asked whether there was a McDonald's in the town. Olivia laughed and said it wasn't invented yet. She said they didn't have cars, only horses. She also said the money they used had the king on it and the coins were bumpy on the edges and very flat. Olivia's mother investigated English coins from 1787 that Olivia claimed she had seen in her life as Daisy and found that there was an imprint of King George III on them with serrated bumpy edges and were flatter than modern day coins. Her mother decided to show Olivia a collection of English coins dating back to the 1600s where Olivia was able to point to a 1787 King George shilling she said she remembered. She was also able to recognise other coins from the reign of King George III. For a child of between two and five years old to remember things in vivid detail is quite amazing because at that age they only had a limited life experience. So if she had not lived a previous life as Daisy Robinson, where did she get all the information from? Number two, Hannah, Canada. Hannah's father had hated hockey all of his life, which disappointed his father because he was passionate about it and they never really bonded because of it. Even when Hannah's father first met her mother, he said they would get on okay if she never spoke of hockey. So Hannah grew up in a family that never spoke about hockey and never watched it on TV. As Hannah was growing up, she never had a babysitter until the age of nine, when her grandmother would be a babysitter. So Hannah had no contact with anybody that could have discussed hockey with her. Like her parents, Hannah had no interest in hockey. One day, when Hannah was three years old, she asked her father why her son didn't come around to take her to hockey games anymore. He asked her when her son had done this, and she replied, You know, Daddy, when I was an old lady. For a couple of months, she asked about her son and seemed frustrated that he wasn't coming around. Hannah then gave details about her son, where she said, he was skinny with red curly hair. She talked about how her son wore a leather coat. She also said that he drove a white car with rust on it. She would also talk about the arena, which surprised the father because as Hannah had never been to an arena and no one had ever discussed that word around her. Suddenly, Hannah stopped talking about her son and hockey games. And when her father later brought the subject up, she seemed to have no memory of them. So, what would possess a three-year-old child, especially a family who didn't even like hockey, to imagine that she'd been an elderly woman wanting her son to take her to hockey games? Now, before we get to number one, we'd like to do a quick message from our sponsor. Finding the right VPN service can be a struggle. However, for as little as $1.99 a month, Surfshark is here to secure your online data with some extra bonus features. Unlike other VPN services, Surfshark allows you to use it on unlimited devices, letting you enjoy the full richness of the open internet freely. If you're addicted to Netflix like us, Surfshark is the only VPN which allows you to access eight different Netflix libraries, including the USA, UK, Japan, France, Australia, India, Italy, and the Netherlands. You can also have peace of mind to be able to surf the net with no ads, trackers, malware, or phishing attempts. The Supreme Whitelister feature also allows specific apps and websites to bypass the VPN and works great with mobile banking apps. With over 800 servers in over 50 different countries and 24 7 support, Surfshark is fast becoming the leader among VPN providers. If you sign up using the special link below, you can enjoy an 83% discount. So why not sign up today? Now, on to number one. Number one, Susan, United States. Susan was a clinical psychologist who from an early age 
regularly dreamt of being an African-American girl of seven or eight walking down a dirt road. Susan, who is Caucasian, grew up in a mountainous area, but the environment of her childhood dreams were different. It is hot, humid, flat, and very dusty. Susan believes it was probably in the southeast United States. As she was walking, she looks down at the dry skin of her hands and thinks they look ashy. Then a car comes along, which appears to be from the 1940s, and she is suddenly pulled into the car. There are two white men in the car that appear to be in their 20s or 30s. She remembers the bench seat, the lines of the upholstery, and the dusty floorboard. There in the car, she was assaulted and lost her life. The memory of this event is as vivid to Susan as any other event in her childhood. She also had repetitive dreams about the event. In some of them, she re-experienced the assault, while in others, she observed what happened from above. She didn't think any of the dreams were nightmares, as they were very realistic, but they frequently woke her up. Susan could think of nothing in her childhood's environment that could have triggered the dreams. There were African Americans living in a town that she grew up in, but there was no racial unrest. In discussions with black friends, they confirmed that the expression ashy was used when their skin became dry. Susan feels her vivid dreams have had no negative effect on her as you grow older, and she has had no relationship problems with her husband, nor has she suffered any anxiety problems, but claims that she has always had an exaggerated startle response.